there's evidence that deaths occurred in the respondents' church as per the OB reports annexed to the deponents' early affidavits in support of the application dated 28th of April. And that although the deaths were reported to the police, there was no reason at the time to suspect that the cause of deaths was criminal in nature, as no autopsies had been con conducted on the bodies at the time. That the preliminary investigations have established that the bodies who were buried at Chakaola are side subjects to the ongoing investigations. That the exhumation of more bodies have been done and autopsies conducted with the same are, are revealed that the cause of the death of some of the victims were not natural but possible homicides. Uh, that there is need for DNA sampling and testing to be conducted for certain whether any of the bodies exhumed at Chakaola belong to the people or individuals who are said to have met the release at New Life Prayer Center. That in the event that the deaths which occurred at New Life Prayer Center are found to be of the persons whose remains have been exhumed from the Chakaola site, murder charges will be prepared against the respondents. That the respondent commands the youth following and is a person of immense influence who is likely to interfere with witnesses. It is on the basis of the foregoing depositions that the state seeks that the respondent be detained for a fresh period of 30 days. The state relied on the decisions of Coleman and Wolfson and Republic Rabels, Diana Sule Suleiman Said and another, um, and Mukhtar Ibrahim Ali was as public, uh, as cited in the case of Mukhtar Ali uh, Republic, and also the decision of Philip Ondara Onyancha and two others which have had the occasion to peruse and which provide the general jurisprudence that a court is mandated on application by a party to value the terms of one or they in the event of change of circumstances, provided that relevant facts for reconsideration are provided and are tenable. Counsel appearing for the respondent have resisted the application <coughs> urging that what the state is attempting to do uh, is a witch hunt and an attempt to use the court process to curtail the respondent's liberty for as long as possible by claiming that the circumstances have changed to warrant such detention. It is stated that the respondent has cooperated with the police by presenting himself when he was summoned and even recorded as statements <coughs> under the court. The respondent's counsel further state that there are, there are no change of circumstances that have been demonstrated by the state to warrant further detention of the respondent which will effectively result in the curtailment of his liberty, which is a constitutional right. Landed counsel for the respondents admit that although the investigations to be considered were previously premised on a myriad of criminal offenses, there is now no explanation as to where those offenses have fizzled out to, resting with the investigating officer zeroing in on the suspected offense or offenses of murder and indication of malice on the part of the investigations. Further, it is argued by the respondents' counsel that the fact that the autopsies have been conducted cannot possibly be construed to be a new matter that would not have been reasonably in the hands of the investigators, as the very purpose of the exhumation of the bodies was naturally expected to be for purposes of determining the causes of death in the area. It is further submitted that the results of the autopsies, therefore, were expected and are not a new discovery, and that in any event, the results do not affect the matter before this course. As the deaths have all along been associated with one Paul McKenzie, his church and his uh, property, his land. In further opposition to the state's application, the respondents counsel state that the application for further custodial orders of the respondent do not affect the DNA exercise and that the same can proceed with his liberty intact. The respondents submit further that the his counsel that it has not been demonstrated by the state how his perceived influence over his followers or church members will derail or impede investigations or the manner in which he will interfere with witnesses. The respondent takes the position that no compelling reasons have been prepared by the state to warrant the custodial orders that are now being sought for 30 days, particularly noting that there are no instances of interference or an attempt thereof. Uh, of witnesses by the respondent that have been demonstrated and that in any event, the state has been given sufficient time to investigate the matter. 
The respondent places reliance on the decision of Oscar uh, Kichuma, Oscar Sudi Kichuma and Republic, uh, in which Mbugi J, as it was, synthesized what is now popularly referred to as the double test. Uh, in the decision, it was held that in such control detention applications, the state must first persuade the court that it is acting in absolute good faith and that the continued detention of the individual without a child being preferred is inevitable due to existing exceptional circumstances. And that secondly, the court observed, the state must demonstrate that the continued detention of the individual without child is the least restrictive action it can take in balancing the interest in a potential criminal trial. The state in rejoinder told the court that as the initial application was made under the prevention of terrorism back quarter, it is available for this court to extend the detention period for a further days, a further 30 days, noting that quarter provides for such extension for up to 60 days. It should be 360 days, I'm sorry. 360 days. I have considered the oral application and the responses uh, there too, and I deduce the issue for determination to be whether the state has presented compelling reasons through the affidavit filed today to warrant this court to detain the respondent for the period short, that is a further 30 days. I well appreciate the two decisions relied upon by the state um, that a court seized of a matter such as the instant one may on application by a party with demonstration that circumstances have changed, review and other position that the court had taken. The question I will then pose is whether the contents of the affidavit presented uh, provide sufficient material that would amount to compelling reasons to warrant the issuance of the orders that the state seeks. In the ruling that this court rendered on the second of May this year, I granted custodial orders for seven days while observing as follows, I quote, this court will in the premises take it that the time is is for purposes of recording witness statements, uh, end of quote. In the final order, I directed that the prosecution today appraises this court on the status of the investigations and I expected the court to be informed, among others, whether the exercise of recording witness statements is complete, but that has not been the case. It remains therefore unclear to me in the circumstances to whether the witnesses generally referred to in the affidavit and submissions presented to the court today are the same witnesses in respect of whom, in my view, seven days was sufficient to have their statements recorded. I say so because the previous application was premised on the ground that witnesses are not recorded statements. It is instructive from the record that the application dated 28th of April 2023 indicated that the respondent was being investigated for offences under various statutes which included the offence of radicalization under quota. In the oral application before me, which in my view is an application independent of the one dated 28th of April 2023, correlated, and from the affidavit filed today, it imagines that the only offence of offences currently under investigation with regard to the respondent is the offence of murder. In the, in the wake, I do not agree that this, this is a matter and a quarter, for which long incarceration period, for accumulating period of up to 360 days can be sought and uh, granted on consideration. That is so because I will bind the state by the material it has presented before. <laughs> That's the affidavit. As to whether the reasons given by the state use the compelling reasons that warrant the detention of the respondent for a period of 30 days, I need not restate the progress of processing and state that the progress of processing the witnesses has not been reported in this court and it cannot be sufficient to be generally stated under one umbrella that the respondent will interfere with the witnesses in the premises, whereas it was clear that the intention for securing the initial period of seven days was for purposes of recording the statements as construed by what was presented for me. The state has also provided the reason that DNA sampling and testing of the remains exhumed from the Shakahola scene has not been done. The question that is unanswered, considering that the owners could prove that the compelling reasons are bound 
remains to the state is how will the respondent's liberty hamper or impede DNA sampling and testing? The state has not provided an answer to this question. Do the reasons given them in the analyzed position above meet the threshold in the double test rule as provided in the case of Sudi Oscar Chichuma? I think not. First, by failing to provide adequate information on the true status of the investigations as ordered by the court, I am persuaded that the state has not acted in absolute good faith in seeking to continue to detain the respondents. For instance, the state, despite having been given time to record to written statements, has not provided information on uh, the position now subsisting, whether those witnesses have recorded statements or not. Second, the argument that DNA sampling and testing is yet to be done cannot be a tenable reason. As I've stated above, it has not been demonstrated how the respondent will impede that exercise. The state did not respond to the respondent's plea for bond or bail. I will then dispose of the state's oral application as follows. <coughs> A. The respondent shall be admitted to a bond of 3 million shillings with one surety of similar amounts or an alternative of cash bill of 1.5 million shillings. B. The bond bail terms granted in the year above shall subsist until the respondent is formally charged and or until investigations are completed. C. The respondent shall not before being formally charged, this is important uh, regarding the respondent, the respondent shall not before being formally charged or while investigations are ongoing, address, make comments, or discuss in public any matters concerning the events relating to what is now commonly referred to as the Chakaora massacre. D, the respondent shall report to the investigating officer once a week on a day of the week and time of the day to be agreed upon by the prosecution council and the defense council. And lastly, parties will be at liberty to apply for the closure of this file once the investigation are closed. Those are the orders of the court. The, the, the ruling has to be... <laughs>
sababu haya yamefanyika lakini siruhusiwi kuongea juu yake kwa hivyo ninawashukuru kwa ajili ya maombi yenu sana tena zaidi na unajua siwezi nikaongea kuhusu hayo ni asante kwa ajili ya kila jambo tuliyopitia tunasema ni asante umetuwezesha kupitia haya na tumepokea kwa shukrani utukufu na sifa ni zako tunapoenda nyumbani kila mmoja apate ulinzi hakuna ajali hakuna mauti na Yesu Jumapili ijayo Jumapili ijayo iwe ni Jumapili iliyojaa nyota na baraka. matendo yako. Kwa jina la Yesu tumeomba na tukuamini. Amen. 